Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi there, welcome to our coffee break. I haven't seen these two in a long time, so we're being it's selfish. A month. <laughs> and it's just hey, I saw three. you yesterday at lunch. Oh, well, that's right. That, but it yes. hasn't a long time before yeah. that, it feels but like. the yeah. three of us. The three of us haven't sat down. And no, I had lunch here, with you last anywhere. week. Right. Yeah. But so I join us. Week. We're just chatting about a lot of things, just catching up in general. Whew. Yeah. yeah it's absolutely. been a whirlwind for me. It's been a whirlwind. I, I keep saying, oh, next month gets better. And I'm like, it hasn't. So you, um, got been, new, you got a new haircut. I did. I yeah, did. It looks yeah. great. Thank you. New glasses, Thank you. new haircut. Yeah, well, these are my cheater readers. <laughs> well, I've got glasses. I, I, I tell you, <laughs> I'm at the point where my readers actually help me see here, not yes. just here. Oh, like, really? Okay. Oh, oh no, no. I need to go see a real <laughs> eye doctor and have my. I, I flip into another decade next year, so uh, oh, well, take your time. But but I'm telling you, it's all good I'm in that other decade. But speaking of age and decades, yeah. I did go see my mom for her 93rd birthday. Yeah, and gosh, congratulations Lord, wood, to living. her. Did you put in 93 Tennessee? candles on the cake? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think any of us could have blown those out. No, nope, no. Nope. But everywhere we went for the entire time, the four days we were there, she was hilarious. Because she'd walk in and she'd say, my daughters are here for my 93rd birthday. And then at the end of the meal, they'd bring a little something. And she's like, how did they know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's interesting. I mean, the, demographically, and you know, they've been saying for years, we're living longer. But your mother lives alone with her vibrant community of friends in Florida at 93 doing her thing. She's amazing. Well, you're going to a 100th birthday party tomorrow. Exactly. And so, you posted yeah. a video that the woman was dancing she at her 99th. She dancing. Anna Vieira um, wow. Cabral Spencer. Married three times, beautiful woman, raised three boys successfully, you know, is still their bookkeeper for their private wow. business interests. This, she will be, she was 100 years old on Monday. Wow. And we've been giving her this major Can party. Can I hire her? Oh, oh my. I wish I had her. I, she's, a, she's an in-law. I wish I had her real genes because, you know. Yeah. Um, she, she, she's by marriage, yeah. not by blood. But since she was 95, the family's been having this major party every year for her birthday. Sure. And it was a major blowout last year at 99. I mean, at these ages, you never every know, Every day is right? a gift. So at 100, it's off the charts, you know. Yeah. And wow. she was, I have a video of her dancing. She's a. You know, beautiful Portuguese woman does her little two-step. I know, love thing. it. She's so cool. So well, we'll all get inspired well, hanging out with her. You know, there is a lot going on with, once upon a time, as a kid growing up, when I thought somebody had 60 and definitely 70, they were old. They and they were looked old. old and they acted old. Yeah. And it's not that we're not acting our ages, but we're more vibrant, we're more engaged. We're doing more. We're healthier and, in different ways. And I, and I really think that mental engagement keeps you going. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's not just well, your physical Well, I was watching a news show recently, and it was um, about a guy who was a barber, and he's 101 years old, and he goes in, opens his shop every day, and cuts people's hair. Yeah. And, but then I started thinking about, like, wow, I wouldn't want to work anymore. But then, you know, where I work, a lot of our hosts are older. Mm -hmm. And so I know, like, this guy Al comes in on Wednesdays, and this is, like, a big part of his life. He's 82 years old, comes in, does his like three, four hour show. We have another guy who's the ex like police chief in Worcester, but he's 78 years old exactly. and coming in and doing these things. And this, um, you know, I, I kind of wish my dad would do more. I mean, he's 86 and right. he'd rather, he watches TV all day. Exactly. And you know, that's it, to the extent that you can continue to encourage it. But he gets out, he has his little men's club group. His, his well, he has his, group he has his McDonald's sees. friends on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, well, but that's so good, even that. It, but it is the, um, we are living longer, you know, um, de definitely health care is better. Mm -hmm. But I also think we're, we are more knowledgeable about how to take care of our bodies and what to do. Well, we have seat belts now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, no, I mean, there's some basic things, too, that if, you know, yeah. I, I mean, know, I, I, mean I know. <laughs> it is a I different mean, lifestyle. If you, look, if you look at this week alone, I mean, the town lost two integral people in town, Bob Lavoy, he was 91, yeah. and his mm -hmm. health had been failing, but he's literally an American hero and a yeah. hero in town, and he was the last surviving Iwo Jima survivor wow. from Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. But then, the, you know, yesterday losing Cynthia Martell, yeah. and she's only 57, and a school what library a in a town. So it's like, you know, it's, you know, we can't just, it's every day, nobody right. knows. You're, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. um, my point is we are living longer, but I think 
being present mm -hmm. and and being mindful and and being engaged um, so that because every day is a gift, <coughs> you get hit by a bus, you know. Absolutely. Every day is a gift. Speaking of which, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, but you guys have been under the weather. What is this going on? Is there some kind of like flu or, or uh, cold going? On? I've been it's lucky. Know. Yeah, I don't have the flu shot, so I, I, I hope yeah. it's not the flu. I, I had the I shot. I don't. I think it's what just a really nasty cold. I got it at the tail end of all my travels. I'm blaming airlines, even yeah. though they say they filter their air. Yeah. I think you're just in close confines and you're next to somebody you don't know. Right. And I'm wrapping up the third week with it and mm -hmm. I still have a little asthma and a little, you know, it's going around. Everybody's yeah. got it. Oh. You know, I she and I didn't it. see each other and she yeah. had it. So I, she didn't get it from <laughs> me. <laughs> got not me, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Yeah. But she has it too. It's yeah. going around, and it's a nasty cold. So oh, wash you your hands. Better. Exactly. Um, you know. Oh, I'm obsessive about it. Cough into your arm. So and, I mean, uh, I think yeah. a lot of what's going on. I think I want to do a huge shout out to Connor Deegan. Oh, oh our town clerk has actually been <laughs> incredible on making sure people have opportunities to be registered for staying open late. And you know, yesterday was the deadline. Um, but that he's been at the high school, he's worked with a girl that's going for her gold award, just really out there getting people registered to vote to get yeah. ready for these upcoming elections, just so that everyone knows that their vote matters. Well, he is such a service um, person in terms of uh, the town business. So someone was, was complimenting him about coming out to their organization here in Hopkinton to, um, what is it, the, the certification, when you become, when you get appointed to a committee or a board, you have to go yeah, you have sworn in. Sworn in. You have well, to be sworn he, in. he actually goes to, like, the Chamber of Commerce for those who need to get re-sworn yeah. in. Yeah, he comes and, to some of Yeah, which is, which is really nice. And I, I mean, I, it's, it's, I think it's that proactive community engagement, if you're going to volunteer, making it easier on the Well, and I, I think important to note is that he sets a tone about inclusiveness, um, that voting matters. Yeah. Um, you know, even when you don't agree with me politically, I want you to vote. Right. <laughs> because voting matters. And even though you now, oh yeah, vote, vote. <laughs> but in, um, in, yeah. In, 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 you know, in, you know, we, you want a large voter turnout no matter yeah. what. Right. And it, you know, and that makes his job harder. The more people turn out, it's more work for him. But you know, yeah, he really he, 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 he wants yeah. the biggest percentage. So at the last presidential election two years ago, um, nationally. 40% did not vote. It's amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, in our May 10 election, that number was much higher who yeah. didn't vote. Yeah. And here we have an election coming up in a couple of weeks, and I, I shake my head going, please. Right. It, your vote matters. Your voice matters. Well, I think people are fired <laughs> up. I mean, on either side of the debates, and goodness knows they've been hotly debated everything. Um, you know, it's just no. been, think, yeah. It's just been a tough time. I mean, as I work in organizations around a variety of things, the seepage from the world outside affects people in their daily work. Right. Uh, you know, even though they're not talking politics, the um, perceptions about each other in terms of you know trust, um, values, etc. I can't tell you how it seeps in and. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, affecting all of us it in has, many ways. It has. Unfortunately, we're in a very divided time, and unfortunately, um, it doesn't stop at the are, door. No, <laughs> and there are elements. And, yeah. it, there are elements that um, are using that to their advantage. Now, what's funny is, um, many, many, many years ago, I had the privilege of living abroad. And they would laugh because they would talk politics and they would heatly debate. Mm -hmm. And they said, culturally, we never talked politics. Well, we now are talking politics, but unfortunately, we didn't take a page right. from <laughs> their discussions and, and keep them civil. You know, ours is, I was reading an article that essentially we have a silent civil war going on. It's, yeah. it's not a physical one, but it's. It's a civil war of, of media, and exactly. and I wish we could find. There's a lot more that unites us and divides us, but we, you know, we have trouble talking about so it. So yeah. since our audience is primarily Hawkington, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a different hat on. Since I chair a committee in town and yeah. on other committees in towns, um, several of the town leaders have merged with Ashland and Holliston on a bet. Ah. So if you want Hawkington to win the bet. We want to have the largest voter turnout percentage over Ashland and Holliston. Oh, I didn't know that. That's oh, yes. cool. So, um, 
<laughs> you get out the way. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think there's a rivalry between Ashland and Hoppington, then that has been gone on for years and years. I didn't know this. Let's win. Okay, let's get the word and out. So, yeah, you let's... know, um, <laughs> get you know, the word if, out. If you want the clockers to have to eat humble pie, which is what they'll be served, <laughs> or have to serve us humble pie at a meeting, um, get out and vote. Yeah. We want to have the highest percentage. The town, the three town clerks are going to be able to give us a data, oh, so that we they know they go by population and percentage of voters. It's not party. It's not anything. Yeah. It's let's just get out the vote because that's what's really important. We want wow. to get the highest oh, percentage good. of voters. Out. I that's like fun. challenges. Let's take that competitive woman here. Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and, I'd love, yeah, and I'd love to see governors in states do the same yes, thing. That would challenge be, our rival states. Send, let's get let's, out the vote. Exactly. Come on, Charlie. Challenge the other. States. Let's get out the vote. Absolutely. Let's have the highest voter turnout of any state in the nation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Highest in Ho we want Hopkinton to be Ashland and, and, Ash Ashland? and Ashland, Ashland and Holliston. Holliston. Yeah. Yes. So awesome. Um, so yeah, we have this little Thanks for tri sharing that. thing Absolutely. going on. And, I did um, not know that. And yeah. I don't want to have to bake humble pies. So come on. <laughs> <laughs> humble pie. I don't know, but I I don't have know. To, we'd have to bring them to serve I it. Think it would be I, nasty. I, I think it's a, a, just a pie as a gift, you know, as an apology, Fine. but we'll have to research. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, things that have crept into our speech that nowadays you're like, where did that saying come I know. from? I love those. And it's funny. Um, generationally words that you use that you know young folks what do you, why do you say what do you what do you mean or what a weird word that is I don't have to think yeah. about one now but it comes up all the time yeah oh funny. yeah oh yeah but, you know, the one thing I just say on, on the, on the um, notion of talking about politics or not it feels to me like things that we when we talk about life in general you know a pushback is well that's political but to me, it's more, you know, we're just living on, in this town or in this planet together. So when we're talking about concerns of, of uh, the environment or concerns about, you know, social issues with people and so forth, when you, when you express a particular opinion, you know, it, it, sometimes there's a sense of, well, you know, don't talk politics. It's not politics. It is life. Exactly. It's, you know, so it's just a, a, way yep. of, a different way That's of thinking true. about it. That's you know? true. Yeah. And... and you know, the, the, the other side of it is when you are confronted with somebody who says something that maybe you don't feel the same mm -hmm. way about, mm -hmm. instead of boldly going in, I have to drink my own Kool-Aid here, <laughs> um, and telling them why they're wrong, sometimes it's important to ask the open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel that way? Yep. How is that mm -hmm. important? Do you know, what, what, what does that do to you? Um, where does this come from? You know, and... and and explore because sometimes when you ask somebody those open-ended questions, they learn because they have sometimes yeah. not themselves explored it, and you certainly learn. But you're absolutely right. In fact, so funny. I was at a um, a meeting this week in Boston, and the speaker talked about having smart conversations, and I was really intrigued because you know communication is so important. Obviously, and it's a big challenge. But a quick acronym for folks in terms of um, having smarter conversations. Conversations that say what need, this is critical conversations, dicey conversations, that um, you need to start with in t understanding each other's intent. So you know what that's like. I mean, if, if I don't understand what you intend, you know, it sort of you know, keeps me guarded. So smart meaning having a shared meaning, SM, shared meaning, being authentic, uh, and then having respect and trust with the person that you're talking with. So preparing for critical conversations in a certain way and there's some you know really fun kind of trigger questions and so forth but this the, at the root of good conversations is relationship you know even the three of us <laughs> we have different opinions about things but it doesn't get crazy because of our relationship because of the way in which we we know each other we care about we each trust. other we trust that we have good intentions, even if we have different opinions. Right. And I think that is That's the important. most important thing. Yeah. It's hard to know. That's why it's difficult to talk to people that you don't know about difficult things, because you don't know what their intent is. And I would say. And I think even on this coming ballot, regardless of the candidates on there, there are also three questions on there. And those are difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. At least two out of three are difficult conversations that people are very much, you know, battling back and forth internally. And I think. It's, there's a lot of media hype, some that oh hate God. back and forth. But the, um, I think if people go to actually the Secretary of State's website,
They can look at the pros and cons of each question. They mm -hmm. can actually get the bios of every candidate. Yes. Um, and it's a very neutral place to pull this data. I, right. I, I really appreciate you uh, citing that because when you try to research some of these topics, you first get the paid for and Ads. you have right, to right. dig in to find out, oh, this is the position of, you know, one of the ones I flip back and forth on is the whole nurses thing. Oh, and, that's a and, tough one. And, you know, the problem is I, I'm parsing through it and what I'm trying to decide is, is there a vote that doesn't change the way things currently are and does one of the votes change, like create a I legal, think, yeah. um, and, and so I, I'm still struggling with that but one. That, and that's a good one to kind of talk about. I mean, it's not political, but yet <laughs> it's critical. It is critical. <laughs> you know, it is critical. So I put that on the page, you know, or somebody posted something, you know, vote no on one yeah. or whatever. And then I said, listen, let's let everybody weigh in on this because I, for one, would love to hear varying opinion. I st I, reading through those, thinking about it, I think I'm going to ask two of my favorite nurses <laughs> and see what they're going to vote, you know, how so they're, what they think. So I've done similar. I've asked nurses and then I've asked some people who are actually in managed care. Mm -hmm. um, and um, opinions have very much varied. Yeah. And all people that I really respect. I mean, I'm leaning one way and that's only because I think it's almost overdue mm -hmm. to have some sort of guidelines, but I do think it takes away from the whole patient experience. So like when you're saying, okay, the nurse is gonna be monitored about how many patients, but at the same time, we're not talking about PT, OT, all these other things that are part of the overall patient care, mm -hmm. just this one aspect of it. But I think, ah. yes, this one aspect has been overlooked and overburdened for many years. Well, mm -hmm. the, the business model of hospitals is, of course, few, you know, to hire um, fewer employees right. and to increase patient loads, you know, and technology has changed, so in some cases that may be warranted. But when you parse through and you go from floor to floor, um, let's take something as simple as maternity. Well, if you have three women in labor, right. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in <laughs> deep labor, there was no running to another patient's room. Right. You know, yeah. it better be all on me. <laughs> well, see, actually, in that aspect, the, the law doesn't affect that. You would have a one-on-one -on -one nurse, how it is set up mm -hmm. and how it has been set up. Um, it's also got provisions written in but to say does, if there, if there, was, there was a ca catastrophe, you know, there's a national disaster, there was a car crash with 10 cars, everyone right. is all hands on deck. These patient limits and things like that doesn't matter. And how it might be, like, different departments have said you don't have more than two, two on on a maternity case and things like that. Those don't change. It's... I think some of it's been long-term care where there's been a lot of overburning mm. and in emergency rooms where been yeah. the heaviest overburning is from the research I'm, I've been finding. It but, in, but in ER, you don't know who, how many people are going to come in on any given day. So, you know, the question is, do you staff for the, the mean or the average? Do you right, staff and that's, that? where, that's where, like, a yeah. ho why hospitals and managed care are taking out these ads saying, it is going to cost more money. There is no sure. doubt it will cost more money. Mm -hmm. um, there is also an extreme shortage of nurses in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's an extreme shortage of nurses around the country. I mean, if you want to talk about um, a, why a is great that career. The, the job conditions are challenging. Well, so there have been a lot of changes. And what has happened is as we've gotten um, more and more technologically advanced, we've increased the um, things that nurses do mm -hmm. that I wouldn't say doctors did, but without technology, doctors did. Right. And so you now have so many levels of nursing qualifications, and you can be so narrow in your studies as a nurse that you could be in this lane and not in Why this lane. Why do we have fewer so people going more. into nursing if we're having a shortage of nurses no, in general? No, it's, it's the fact that there's more and more they are doing that aren't being done by the doctors. Well, the, um, Plus, the population is growing. Yeah, the, or the um, sickness level. Or I mean, my alumni has, a, has, has since I, I left, adapted a very well-respected nursing program, mm -hmm. mostly in a master's in nursing. Mm -hmm. And that has become one of the criterias 
for nurses to make the kind of money they want to make. They want to be able to get their white coats and then get their practitioner's license. Yep. Yeah. And so they're not the average RN that is walking down the halls in a nursing Taking home a or things like thermometer. that. Right, right, but right. They actually can take on some of their own patients. They yep. can have they they can actually be yes. signed on. With a master's, absolutely. They're like the it, yeah. In fact, when I go to the doctor for a certain specialty stuff, not that I'm not sick or whatever, but they, I always get the nurse practitioner. I mean, first. you know, and I, I've never even. And I have heard of more people. You know, actually going into the field. Actually, I know a young man who's graduating from it this yeah. year, and he's graduating a year early. And it's an excellent career. It's, a, it's an excellent it career. Is. I mean, I think Andrew's girlfriend is switching into it now. Yeah. Oh wow! Good. Yeah, well, um, yeah, exactly. Um, but the um, it's a it's a career that'll never go away. Yeah. My, my my father's thing was always. Here are three jobs you can go after, darling. You can be a teacher, you can be a nurse, or you can be a funeral director. <laughs> oh, oh, God! Oh. And he, I, and he, and he was the not serious. I, I, I went accounting. to that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. Even though technology is making bookkeeping, yep. you know, less, yep. you know, it used to be my profession. It was real pyramid shaped mm. with a ton of staff people, and technology has made it more house shaped. Yep. Uh, it's still a demand field, and right now in this marketplace, you can't hire. Um, it's it's, it's, it's hard a to tight find market. People? Yeah, wow. it's, it's, it's tight across the board. So we're seeing, you know, I work with a lot of nonprofits. The tsunami of executive director turnover is here. I mean, so many, so many are leaving, yep. and you know, having the right skills and so forth. But my parents used to say when we were growing up, in terms of what to go into it, default. No offense to folks in these fields. My parents used to say, you can always sell insurance or real estate. <laughs> you know, if all else fails, you have to pass tests and whatnot. But those jobs, those fields are. Open well, to you if you want well, to do it. They and are can open, do it. but it can be very competitive. Well, and you yeah, gotta be, didn't say it was yeah. easy, but yeah. you know, you can so, always sell insurance. But, I can hear them saying that. But I will tell you, you know, we're talking about this, and we're saying, oh, there's a dearth of people. But it's really not a surprise. This has been predicted for some, some time. We're part of the baby boomers. You're barely a baby boomer. I don't think you're in it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not in, I'm not, not in it at I think all. You're yeah. an older Gen X. I'm, yeah. a, I'm an older you're an older Gen, Gen X. X. But, so, yeah, yeah. but the boomers. And, and then, we're barely in it. Just be, let's be real. We're at the we're the youngest at the very you know the well, tail end. Well, you're born of in the it. 50s. You're you're part of the boomer. And it's a very end it of started it. it ends in 1962 I think. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point being is there's the boomers, but then there was a big trough, mm -hmm. and and then you have the boomers with their boomlet, which the boomlet <laughs> the, the boom. peak of the boomlet generation is just 27 right now. So you've got this demographic, and the boomlet isn't as big as the boomers, but there's a trough. And this group that's in the trough, you just don't have physically as many people oh, yeah. in that space. But I also think when, we, when we're talking the folks about who are in their very, 40s. very much, if you're talking nursing and teaching, they were very much gender specific, very focused. I mean, if you got Framingham State used to be the woman's teaching college, yeah. and that, that it was pumping out teachers. And now a lot of these people, and even like this young man who's graduating from nursing school, their offers to come in and doing scientific research and biotech companies and things like yeah. that with nursing degrees are offering them more money with They're less hours right. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The same thing is like a gentleman I know who left teaching biology because they then wanted him to go get a master's in engineering yeah. to add on is that he can make more money doing something else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's and that's that, you know so that the, these, these these very valued. Positions we need. Mm -hmm. um, one, we have to make sure we pay them enough. Right. And right. the other part is that right. um, so because they are getting s pulled into other. To get exactly. me started. Where you're yeah. talking about this, like expanding technology, things yep. like that. Exactly. Their skills put them right into that. that Absolutely. That well wheel. And and the problem is we you know if you work a minimum or just above minimum wage job, you cannot make. Yeah. Uh, you can't afford to live. Um, exactly. You don't make a living wage. And we all go, I, I was reading somebody's comments, uh, you know, about, ah, oh, well, it's unskilled labor. It's like, no, mm. no, it's not unskilled labor. There's a lot of skilled labor that can't make a living wage. Mm -hmm. And once upon a time, if you worked a 40-hour a week, oh, yeah. you could make a living wage. And we haven't kept pace. I know. You know, yeah. everybody's like, Oh, you well, know, employment's changing. up. Yeah. And it's like, you don't look at employment, look at mm -hmm. living wage. Yeah, yeah. We've had um, the fire department last weekend had their open house. That was kind of fun. Oh, I yeah. saw. Yeah. They were giving yeah. kids rides and things like that. And oh, I, um, yeah. But there's, um, 
it's the full kind of harvest season going on, so things yep, with apple yep, picking. Well, the last of the uh, farmer's market, or at least on the common, was yes. last Sunday. And, and now uh, it starts at Western Nurseries. It's going to start at Western Nurseries, nurseries which I'm so excited December? about. It's Sorry? It's December 15th, I think. I, I don't forget know. the date. Western but Nurseries. Sure. And we'll go one, one thing for the three of us personally, we want to make the announcement. There will be a fifth annual Shopping for the Cause yes. on yes. December 2nd um, at Hopping Center for the Arts. Uh, from uh, 3 to 6. It's a very, very busy weekend. So it's, we're doing the Sunday afternoon. We cap off that weekend. Mm -hmm. The holiday stroll that's been taken over day by the before. Chamber of Commerce is the day before. Also, the uh, HPTA is doing a uh, home tour yeah. the afternoon before that. Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole wraparound weekend of events where you support local businesses, support you know, local charities, right. and at the same time, getting to know your neighbors, the laying of the tree, and everything else going sure. on. Sure. No, thanks for mentioning that, of course. Right. It's going to be up on us, you know, and the just to, to uh, let everyone know that all the proceeds from our Shopping for a Cause will benefit uh, the Hopkinton uh, Center for the Arts. Yep. You know, lots of wine and, and shopping. They, and, and, <laughs> so and, and, and they have their fun. gala coming up on November 3rd. Oh, yep. yeah, and that looks fun, too. Yes. So, it's it go. the season. Well, we're in gala season now anyway, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. But, uh, it used to be spring, and now it's now fall it's like fall and before and, and the holidays. Everything. Um, a couple of um, shout-outs and a couple of uh, passings. So I've already said the passings, um, but I want to congratulate Michelle Murdoch for being named editor. Thank you. And yeah. Michelle Murdoch actually her, used to be the news director here at HCAM, so it yeah, also feels like part of the yeah. family. And she also sits on the board of HCAM, so congratulations to Michelle. We're going to have her on and she's visiting with us soon. The editor now of the editor Independent. Independent. Um, which is awesome, and which congrats. Awesome. And, um, Gosh. Uh, part of Center School Reuse Committee, we turned in our final report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't miss our, do, we thought we were going to get, not be a committee anymore, but they won't do that yet. So, <laughs> they still want to It's now in the next hands and to look at the permanent yeah. building committee. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a lot going on. The turf fields are opening up. Right. Yep. Um, at the library, they're celebrating their annual, uh, um, first year since the library opening, and there's some events wow. going on I just saw on Facebook. Yeah. And, and they're doing the, and they're doing the uh, Books in Bloom again, which oh, is yeah. an event I like. Where what like, is that? I, you, you pick like a book, and then someone designs a flower, flower arrangement, arrangement that around is inspired it. from it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, okay. it's like I, Art and Bloom at the yeah. um, HCA okay. and at um, and Bloom. Flora and Winter yeah. at um, Worcester Art Museum I go yeah. to. Oh, fun. fun. So, but, absolutely. Um, have well, a great week. Have a great good Halloween. Seeing you guys. And absolutely. Remember we chatted vote. about nothing, and here we are at the end of the show. <laughs> Don't vote forget November to vote. 6. Don't forget to vote. We want to win in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining Thanks. us. We'll see you next time. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.